What's up everyone and welcome to the first official episode of Munching Orange Reviews. Before getting started, I want to thank you all so much for watching the pilot episode on the Dead Space 3 demo. There was so much feedback and I read all of them and I really appreciate everyone that left a comment letting me know what you liked, what you didn't like, so hopefully this one's a little better. I also saw a lot of comments comparing me to peanut butter. I don't see the resemblance. Ever since the birth of the pilot episode, I've been thinking to myself, what game to review for the first official episode? A game that I've never played before, a game that I played when I was a kid, or a game that I love so much that it makes my wee wee tickle every time I hear it mentioned. Today I'm taking a little bit from two of those. It was a game that I really liked as a kid, and a game I still love so much playing today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's play some Sly Cooper. Sly Cooper is a raccoon who descended from a long line of master thieves that stole from master criminals and recorded all the secrets of sneaking and stealing in a book called The Thievius Raccoonus. On the night Sly was to inherit the ancient book, a gang known as the Fiendish Five showed up at his house, killed his fascia, and stole the Thievius Raccoonus. They tore the book into five pieces and split it amongst themselves, each taking a part to their secret lairs in different corners of the world. Sly was taken to an orphanage where he met his lifelong friends, Bentley the Turtle and Murray the Hippo, and together they formed the Cooper Gang, traveling around the world in the Mystery Machine on their mission to recover the Thievius Raccoonus. But the game actually doesn't explain any of this right off the bat. Instead, pushing the start button at the title screen dives right into the introduction level, where Sly Cooper is sneaking into Carmelita Fox's office, an international police inspector, and Sly's love... hate interest. From her office, Sly manages to steal the information he needs to track down the Fiendish Five and retrieve the stolen book. I've already mentioned the Fiendish Five about a million times, but just who exactly are they? Well, that is an excellent question. Myself? Am I, am I talking to myself right now? To prevent any further talking to myself, I've created a fictional alter ego. Everyone, please welcome Billy Bob. Hey there, everybody. My name is Billy Bob, and today I'm going to tell you a little story about the Fiendish Five. First off, from the Welsh Triangle, we have Sir Raleigh. He enjoys fine dining and plundering for booty, if you know what I mean. Over from Mesa City, we got Mugshot, and he enjoys popping caps and bitch asses. Do you even lift, bro? From the mighty confines of Haiti, we've got Miss Ruby. In her spare time, she enjoys playing Parappa the Rapper and summoning the undead. Don't miss out on this one, boys. And finally, all the way from China, we got the Panda King. He has a really small- Well, that's plenty enough about the Fiendish Five now. Wait, Billy Bob, you only named four characters. Well, you know, I thought I wouldn't spoil the final boss with him being the final boss and all, but I hear he's a big fan of Tootsie Pops. Sly Cooper is mainly a third-person platforming stealth game, but there's tons of minigames and boss battles that switch up the formula. Let's take it one step at a time. There are a total of five worlds with about eight levels each, aside from the final world. After choosing a world, you're thrown into an introduction level, where you play as Sly and try to get the key at the end. These intro levels generally give a pretty good idea of what to expect from the scenery in the rest of that world. After the introduction stage, you're taken to a hub where you can choose from three to four different levels you want to take on next. Collect the keys at the end of two of these levels, and you can unlock the rest of the hub, which has a couple more levels to choose from. Once you collect all seven keys in a world, you unlock the boss level, where you take on one of the Fiendish Five. As I said earlier, most of the levels involve sneaking and jumping around as Sly Cooper in a fairly linear stage, trying to reach the key at the end. But sometimes the game will surprise you and toss you into some rather... interesting mini-games to earn the key instead. Which brings me to my next point. Mini-games! Let's go over them! First we got an asteroids kind of game where you shoot crabs and collect some booty. Not that kind of booty, we already made that joke. Next we got a shooting game where you have to protect your pink hippopotamus friend from all sorts of armed animals and exploding barrels. Oh come on, that was like a mile away, how did that hit him? There's a game where you slaughter hordes of innocent piranhas to light up some deku torches or something. A rather boring kart racer kind of game and an on-rail shooter that goes on forever. And there's a game where you... Um... Uh, you... Uh, Holy shit, suicide bombing chickens! 
By the way, kids, you better like recycling, because you gotta do the racing game twice and save the fat hippo like five times. I honestly don't like a lot of the mini games, but there's not really that many of them, and they can be a nice change of pace after playing through a lot of sly levels in a row. Besides, all the sly levels are really fun and keep it unique by introducing really cool mechanics like this one where you sneak around in a barrel. Plus, a lot of the levels make really good use of the powers you acquire in each world as well. The final type of level are the boss battles, where some of them can actually differ pretty drastically from the normal gameplay. We already introduced the Fiendish 5, so let's go over their boss battles now. Sir Raleigh the first boss, and Panda King the fourth boss, actually play out pretty similarly. The camera is locked into the center of the room as you avoid crap and then hit the bosses whenever you get the chance. Sir Raleigh jumps around in a pattern trying to squish you with his massive buttocks, but you can learn the pattern pretty easily and hit him with your cane when he deflates. Panda King is rather easy. You jump around avoiding his fireballs and making your way to the center of the room, where you wail on him while he tries to teach you the art of flame food. Fiery wheel! Palms of thunder, booming chop. The second boss, Mugshot, is probably my least favorite because of just how weird you take him out. He's constantly trying to shoot you with his massive guns. No, not those guns, those guns! And you run around the room trying to reflect all these mirrors to the center point to shoot him with a big laser or something? One trick I learned here is if you just roll around you can literally avoid all his gunfire, making the battle pretty easy. I honestly just don't get what's up with the battle. I guess he's trying to get you to reflect on life. <laughs> yeah, get it because there's a mirror and the light beams dead life and the third boss Ms. Ruby is probably the most unique to all the mini games unique to the mini games to, to this game because I mean look at it you're basically playing Parappa the Rapper here <laughs> in the mind. If you wanna test me, I'm sure you'll find the things I'll teach ya. Be sure to beat ya. Nevertheless, you'll get a lesson from teacher. Now kick, kick, punch, punch, jump, jump, block. Once more, now kick, kick, punch, punch, jump, jump, and block. Don't get cocky. It's gonna get rocky. We're gonna move down to the next to jump. I actually found it pretty challenging, but once you master it, you get to slap her tail and take her out. Aside from Mugshot, I think all the boss battles are actually really cool and unique, and they bring a nice twist to taking out a boss. And of course, there's still the final boss battle, but we're gonna leave that till the end. A little earlier, I mentioned that you get powers as you go through the worlds. Did you say powers? Can it powers? Austin? Powers? What? Throughout the game, you have the chance to acquire various new powers and abilities for Sly. New abilities like the Spire Jump and Turning Invisible are learned at the end of each world as you acquire sections of the Thievius Raccoonus by defeating the Fiendish Five. But there are other abilities and power-ups you can learn by collecting the various clue bottles scattered throughout the platforming levels of the game. Collecting all the bottles in a level allows Bentley to uncover a secret code, which unlocks the vault in that level. Inside the vault, you can find power-ups like the Mine and the Decoy. And... I don't know, I never really use these. Except for the roll, because that thing is overpowered. You can also find upgrades that allow you to survive when you fall in pits and water without losing a hit point. Or an upgrade to your binoculars which allows you to see breakable objects and remaining clues in a world. But aside from clue bottles and keys, there are other items in the game as well. Lucky Charms can be found hidden in levels, and they grant Sly an extra hit point, just like the Ooga Booga Mask in Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> Except when you get three lucky charms in a row, instead of going ape shit like in Crash Bandicoot, you just get an extra life. <laughs> Finally, there are coins littered through every platforming level in the game. Collect a hundred of those and you get a lucky charm. So we have plundered for booty with Sir Raleigh, reflected on our lives with Mugshot, danced the night away with Ms. Ruby, and learned the art of flame foo with the Panda King. One final member of the Fiendish Five remains, Clockwork, in the final chapter, The Cold Heart of Hate. Clockwork does not screw around with hub worlds or clue bottles. The final world is a gauntlet of six levels back to back, leading to the final battle with Mr. Owl himself. First we have an on-rail shooter where we strap a turret onto the mystery machine as we try to break our way into Clockwork's fortress. After fighting your way through minefields, evil robotic owls, and rocks, we make it to a giant cave with... computers hanging from the ceiling? 
You go around running over computers while pushing away the great Mighty Pooh's babies. I mean, look at these things. They're giant living turds. Anyway, make it past that and Sly faces the hardest hardcore parkour challenge yet as he tries to save his love, Carmelita. But even when you make it past all the hyper beams, thunderbolts, and flamethrowers, it is not enough and Bentley gets his own level at last. Apparently you hack into Clockwork's system by playing some little shooting minigame thing, which I actually found pretty tough, but make your way through that, and we have the final... SHOOTING GAME! I was honestly a little sad to find another shooting level, but I promise this is the last one, and once you beat your way through that one, you face your final challenge. You jump, climb, and cling away on your final challenge as you make your way to the middle of the volcano, where Clockwork awaits. The music tenses up as you wait for the right moment to jump and the lava rises trying to kill you constantly. Oh, this is such an awesome final level. But you make it to the top and the final battle against Clockwork begins. I remember having nightmares for days the first time I heard this wretched owl speak. Sly Cooper, you have escaped my gas chamber. Sly straps on his jetpack to take on the final foe with the help of Carmelita. You avoid his purple balls and wait for Carmelita to shoot your gun as your only chance of hitting this mechanical menace is when his body parts are electrocuted. Wail away at his evil face long enough and the owl falls to his doom. Not? Now he sends death rings after you which are pretty easy to avoid. Shoot the shocked areas once again and the owl falls into the burning lake once and for all. Never! Sly faces one final platforming challenge as he makes his way to Clockwork's head make it through and you earn the satisfaction of wailing away at that vile creature's metal skull with your cane and end his days forever. But the show's not over yet, boys and girls. There's a couple of things left to do in Sly Cooper in order to get 100%. Now that you have defeated Clockwork, you can open the final vault in the Panda King level, Flaming Temple of Flame, and obtain the stun power. And if you've collected all the bottles and opened all the vaults in the game, you get an extra cutscene, where Sly completes the Thievius Raccoonus and mentions he will chronicle his own adventures in a great book. But this still doesn't get you 100%. The final challenge in Sly Cooper comes from Time Trials, which you can attempt when you revisit any of the platforming levels. Also, there's Animals Kissing. Disregarding that I didn't think a lot of the minigames were too great, Sly Cooper stands as one of my favorite platformers of all time. The story of a master thief raccoon searching for revenge, blended with the unique characters in Sly Cooper, make it an experience that I've always really enjoyed. From the start, they dive right into the gameplay, and I'm glad they did, because it's definitely the most captivating part of the game. The music fits really well, staying low and tense in the sneaking segments, and then hyping up whenever you get into a battle. And the cell shady cartoon style graphics that they use for the gameplay fits really well with the comic book styled cutscenes that they use to explain the story. All of these features and more created an awesome game that was well received enough to get two sequels in its time and a new one coming very soon. I suppose if this is going to be a review show, I should start giving games some sort of rating. So with all that said, I give Sly Cooper 9 out of 10 oranges. If you're wondering how to get this game, you can pick it up online for the PS2 for about $20, but I'd recommend you get this right here. It's the Sly Collection and it includes the first three games all together for about the same price, remastered in HD for the PS3, and that's what I played this on and it looks amazing, sounds amazing, and that's probably what I'd go for. So that has been it for the first episode of Munching Orange Reviews. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. But before you leave, I'd like to mention that I'll be streaming Sly Cooper 2 and 3 in preparation for the release of the new game Sly Cooper Thieves in Time on February 5th. So if you'd like to watch that, I'll be streaming them daily over on twitch.tv slash notmunchingorange. So check that out. Link is in the description. So once again, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. It was actually a pretty big challenge, but I really enjoy making these. So thank you for watching once again and see you all in the next one.